right, we're going over to the sink now to use our little venting device and get ready to eat some yakisoba. There we go. So this is really handy. There goes all that nice broth. I'd probably keep mm. a little bit of the broth mm. in, but you see? Yeah. But it's nice when they give you these high-end devices like this so you can, don't even have to have to have any special tools. You can just uh, do it in the microwave. It's because they're made to eat at like 7-Elevens. All the 7-Elevens there have yeah. microwaves and stuff. No, they are, mm, smells good. Looks delicious. Ready to go. Probably don't need this guy anymore. And I'm excited for the mayonnaise packet. That's gonna be the best part. We've also got cheese flavor. Here's another Sam Yang. We had the spicy chicken. Now we've got a cheese, cheese chicken who loves his cheese. And we've got, uh, yeah, look at that guy. They always have the funniest chicken pictures on there. And then there's the Chef Morimoto ramen I was talking about. The Iron Chef from Food Network. I don't know uh, how good his ramen is, but Next time. Should, next time we'll find out how good Chef Morimoto's ramen is. Oh yeah, there's mayonnaise on ramen. There we go, guys. There's all the mayonnaise on all the ramen. You wouldn't think it's gonna be good, but it's actually super good. Japanese people don't mess around. It's kind of like okonomiyaki, where they make the egg, the egg dish with some noodles mixed in, and then they uh, add mayonnaise to that. So it's not as uncommon as you think in Japanese cuisine. It just sounds crazy in American cuisine. Although I had someone make a grilled cheese for me one time with mayonnaise instead of butter, so you see weird things in American cuisine too. But here we go. I'm gonna mix it together a little bit. Let's see what we got going on with this guy. Don't wanna make a huge mess. Roll. There we go. Mmm. It's good, you can really uh, taste the mayonnaise, which is nice. It gives a kind of a salty, creamy flavor that is actually very enjoyable. And it's got that sort of normal ramen flavor on the back end, which mixes really well with the, uh, with the mayonnaise. We'll see if the dog will eat it or not. Oh, dog looks like he'll eat it. Dog likes ramen. That's good news, guys. I was gonna be worried if the dog wouldn't eat the ramen. Uh, my lovely wife, Erin, would you like to try some? Yeah. Some of this fancy mayonnaise ramen? <laughs> All right, there she is. We just got married. This is the biggest benefit of uh, the wedding so far, is shared ramen nights. It's good, huh? The mayonnaise kind of gives it a fun flavor. It is mayonnaise -y. Yeah, but in a nice way. <laughs> in the nicest of ways. I'd gobble as much of that down as possible. The dog would also. Jules, would you eat more mayonnaise? <laughs> Does the dog like mayonnaise? But stop by Wabi Sabi in the west side of Bend, Oregon for all your ramen needs. We're gonna keep getting in the weirdest flavors we can find. I think this crazy cheese chicken is the next bet for sure. <laughs> Look at that guy. The other one was breathing fire and throwing, throwing Looney Tunes bombs. This one is just like literally dancing with a piece of cheese, I assume, or cuddling it. But I cuddle my cheese sometimes. Have you ever cuddled with your cheese? Shut up. No, no, my face is hard. All right. But the dog. How did the dog learn it then? The dog learned it from you, Aaron. Let's not let's not lie. 